Everybody loves romance, right? Yeah, not me. So, I was trying to think of how best to address this sort of element in my feelings about writing romantic subplots, and I guess I'm just going to talk about the fact that there aren't any in this book, and why not? I'm not going to say that, like, the world is 100% devoid of romance, and there's basically two characters that there's some kind of romantic tension between, but it's off to the side. It never directly uh, impacts things. And I just, I don't like writing romance. And I rarely enjoy reading it. Here's my big thing with romantic subplots. It's basically the thing that, and this is hardly uh, a new observation, this presumption that the lead male and lead female characters must get together uh, over the course of the thing, which is, of course, ridiculous nonsense, and that it, it, it's stupid and pointless. And even, it, honestly, even if it does that, where, like, they get together at the end, that's usually one of the more innocuous versions. The, the really, the stuff that really drives me crazy is when the romance causes characters to make very stupid decisions over the course of the story, usually involving rescuing and things like that. Now, I can roll with this if it is a pre-existing relationship that was established and began and has been going since before the story started. But if they just met, no, no, that absolutely drives me nuts, especially if it's not what I'm here for. That's my big problem. Like, I should clarify, I don't have a problem with romantic stories. I do have a problem with romantic subplots. Because if it's a romantic subplot, then odds are I'm not here for the romance. I'm here for something else. Now, I'm not saying nobody's here for the romance. I know that shipping culture is a thing. I'm aware. But funny thing about shipping is uh, fans can do that regardless of whether you actually put romance in the work. But that's a that's a tangent. I'll try not to go down that road. But anyways, if it is a subplot, it means that there's something else going on. I don't just mean story, I mean genre. You are probably doing something else. You are telling an action story, an epic, a chase. You know, it's something, save the world, whatever. It's something other than a romance that you have injected a romance story into. And very rarely do those romance stories feel like they flow into the rest of it. They feel like they put the rest of it on hold or are a delay or otherwise a stall that is stopping the main story from happening every single time they end up taking up story space. Like, the most egregious example that I can cite, and, like, I don't know if I'm just going to date myself with this reference, but in Metal Gear Solid 2, PS2 game, because I'm old, there, the character that you spend most of the game playing is a character called Raiden. And Raiden, <laughs> his girlfriend basically keeps calling him up in the middle of firefights to complain about their relationship at him. And every time it happened, I wanted to throw the controller going, really? Like, look, I'm not even judging your relationship or whether or not you're a good girlfriend normally, but this is not the freaking time! And that's an extreme version of why I really don't like romantic subplots. That said, they can be integrated into stories in a way that feels more natural and feels more integrated. This story really didn't have room for that, especially not for my main character. As I've noted before, Ferris, the lead character of the story, is on the run for pretty much the entire length of the book. He doesn't have time to stop and slow down and get to know somebody in any kind of meaningful way. And I suppose that's the other thing. That's true of many stories in which a romantic subplot is injected, but they do it anyway, often leaning on this notion of love at first sight or something thereof. And that's a... That's a whole other can of worms. Maybe it's part of the reason why a lot of sequels feel justified in breaking up couples that have come together in the next film. Um, because I, I would like to think it's because they realize, oh, if they if they uh, got together that quickly and that rashly, it probably won't last. Except it never feels like that because usually it's a major point in the next story and then they make it a thing about them getting back together again. So no, I think writers just don't know how to write existing stable relationships a lot of the time. But again, that's tangenting. I'll try. I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay more focused on this one than I, than I have been in some of these. But the thing is, the whole thing of instant connection with people, instant romantic connection, I'm not going to say it doesn't exist, 
But here's what I've observed in my lifetime. People, well, first of all, let's make a distinction. There's love at first sight or love at first direct contact. Let's go with that. Because love at first sight, you just see someone. That's creepy. Can we just accept that? That's just creepy. I don't care who you are. I don't care who, what the gender of the person being seen and the person doing the seeing are. I, whatever, the, whatever mix you want to do, it's creepy. The notion of love, like love at first sight, is creepy. That's stalker crap. So let's set that aside for a moment and let's go with at first direct interaction. You know, so at least heh, they've met. So certainly let's initially distinguish between lust at first connection and love at first connection. Lust at first connection, oh yeah, that, that definitely does happen. And the problem that I tend to have is it's rarely acknowledged that that's what's going on in stories. Like the best you tend to get is, well, it started as that, but then the feelings deepen. Like it, it's, it's okay just to have horny feelings for somebody. It's not okay to, you know, just do whatever you want with those feelings. Your behavior needs to still be appropriate, but it's okay just to have horny feelings. Like that's all right. It doesn't have to later become romantic. Again, it's a tangent. There's a lot of tangents I have to try and head off at the pass talking about this topic. So let the concept of love at first interaction, generally referred to as love at first sight. Here's my life experience. My life experience is that that can happen, but people who tend to do it tend to do it a lot. And they tend to cycle through partners uh, or are polyamorous, but that's its own can of worms that I don't feel like opening up right now. So the, the, the thing that will always drive me the craziest is your character, especially your lead character, doing something and sacrificing and being prepared to give up or endanger whatever else they've been working toward that's been their goal for this story for the sake of saving someone that they've only recently met. Like, that drives me nuts. There are there are some ways to make it work. Like, if you can really establish a, you know, the sacrifice of human life is never okay style um, uh, morality for the character, maybe you can justify it. But normally they just seem to go, oh, they're in love. Bite me. No. So, like, given the pace of the story that I'm telling and the fact that the lead character really can't slow down, if he slows down, he's going to get caught, that largely means that there's no time. Because if I, if I am going to put a romantic story and have it be a focus and actually directly impact the plot in any notable way, well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some time into the dang thing. But for the most part, I don't want to. <laughs> Which is why there's no romance in Dreams of Fire. Like I said, the, there's one sort of side thing with a supporting character, but it's it it's pre-existing, it's complicated, and it's tangential. But that's sort of my general rundown of some of my frustration with romantic subplots in general, and uh, in particular why it was never in the cards for me to put it in Dreams of Fire. And I did even briefly consider, should I be putting it in, in here, when I realized that the final product was going to end up in that sort of new adult, young adult demographic as probably having the hardest appeal. And there is almost always a romantic subplot in that age bracket demographic. And I just realized, no... No, I will hate myself if I do that. So I didn't. And it is my hope that it results in something that is more focused. Uh, because th there are things that you can add. There are plots that you can do that add life and add uh, depth to characters and locations and a world. But then there are things that you can do that just feel like they are stalling and getting in the way of why we're all here. And that's how I feel about most romantic subplots. So those are my thoughts on that. These uh, will continue to come out. The uh, Kickstarter is still up and doing like scary well by my measures. Um, so if you haven't supported that already, consider it. Um, I'll probably actually link this video up there also. Um, 
because to make sure the Patreon backers are seeing this. So, hi there. Uh, I'm just rambling now. So, thanks so much for joining me for this. Whatever your thoughts on romantic subplots are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. I mentioned the Kickstarter. I also have a Patreon. All the usual stuff. Like, share, subscribe. I appreciate it. But no pressure to do so. Because, you know, we take a relaxed attitude around here. So, just come on back next time you need a break.